In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can verify your contract on Ethereum, meaning I have deployed a contract. It looks like this. I have it on uh, one of the test that on Ropestin and I open up the Etherscan block explorer and it looks like this. I mean, it's just some code here and I can't really see the contract. I can't interact with the contract. But when I look at another contract, that's a token contract, I can see all of this, these functions here. If I go to contract and uh, I can then interact with these uh, functions here. All of these are um, read functions. I can also execute functions here. Mint, of course, I would get an error if I tried to, but um, you see, I can interact with the contract here. That's the point. But with my contract, I can't. And that's because it haven't, hasn't been verified yet. And I'm going to show you how to do it. This contract, specifically this one here, is this one. It's a very simple Hello World smart contract. It has a string. It uh, can get the string. It can set the string. And that is what is deployed here. Now I'm going to show you how, we, how to verify this. And after that, I'm going to show you how you verify a complex contract. Because you might have a contract with tons of dependencies with uh, different imports and you know you inherit contract and so on i'm going to show you that as well but first let's start with the basics so you go into etherscan or whatever block explorer you're uh, you're on this works similarly to how you would do it on bsc scan binance smart chain uh, so you go into whatever block explorer you want but etherscan works like this verify and publish you click on the contract tab let's see if i make this a bit bigger verify and publish you click there and then it will pre-fill the contract address here. Uh, select compiler type here. For this one, we can choose single file because the contract is so simple that we can uh, fit it all into one file. Then compiler version. Let's see what did we use here. Here.7.5. This is an old contract that I have been lying around. Here.7.5. Open source license type. Uh, I will select no licenses. license. Um, there we go. I agree to terms of service. Continue. And now what I need to do is I need to enter the contract code below. Right? So I'm going to take my code here, copy all of it, paste it into here. Constructor arguments. I don't have a constructor, so I don't need to input any constructor argument. Uh, contract library address. I don't have any libraries. Uh, any other settings, I don't need to fill that out. All I need to do is paste the code in here and then click on the, on the robot, verify and publish. And there we go. Now, uh, it's successfully generated bytecode and ABI for contract address. And what it can do with this, it can take the code and it can compile that down into bytecode and it can verify that it's the same code that is on the blockchain. So now we have showed our code and we can verify that it's the same that is on this contract address. So now that can be used as an interface, first of all, to verify what the contract looks like, but also as an interface so that people can interact with your contract from the block explorer because they now know what the contract functions look like. So I have all of this here. And if we now go back to this contract, you should be able to see that indeed it is verified. And <clears throat> I can read the contract. The string is currently hello Philip, and I can also write to the contract. For example, set the string here. Let's say I need to connect to Web3, MetaMask, boom, connect. And then I can interact with it here and set hello. Let's see if it. Now, right, do some transaction, firm, and this, it takes some time, let's see. Well, they did say it was in the beta version. <laughs> let's see if it has changed yet. There we go, there's a transaction. It has been confirmed. Read contract. Oh, it's different. All right, so it works. It works. Now, how do we do this in a more complex contract? I have an example for you. So I have this NFT that I created in another video. This is for demonstration. 
let's see here we go this is an nft contract and it doesn't look uh, much uh, like much because it's very few lines of code but this is using an open sampling contract which uh, most people do when they deploy tokens uh, erc 1155.sol so this is a dependency that we have because it's not enough if i just take this code and i copy that into the block explorer it's not going to verify because that's not the entire code because an import statement is really just taking what's on this url and pasting it in where the import statement is so in the end for the compiler it would just be one big file but you see it as this clean look i only have this here and i import the rest but from the compiler's point of view it just pastes everything into this file and compiles it sends it to the blockchain so if we need to give the program or the website that's going to verify this we need to give them all the code because otherwise it can't verify your contract if you don't give it all the code because it's not going to match the byte code that is generated from the code that you submit and the byte code that's on the blockchain so you need to give them all your code and that's what we're going to do now so first of all i'm just going to find this on the um, on the blockchain because i don't remember or let's see no i did not deploy this to the testnet so let's do that first Where are we deploying? There we go, yeah. So this was original for the Binance Smart Chain tutorials. So that's why it's called Binance Smart Chain NFT.sol. But that doesn't matter because the code is the same. Let's see here. There we go. Let's check this action out. So we find the contract. There we go. And also, this is not verified. So we're going to go ahead and verify it. Verify and publish. And to please select compiler type. Uh, in this case, we're also going to select single file actually because well, we actually have one file ourselves. And then we have a bunch of libraries that we're going to import. We can give um, Etherscan those links. The compile version here 0, 0.8.0. Uh, no lies or let's see what is the license of open zeppelin careful here mit continue and then i'm going to enter the source code as before boom boom there you go and we don't have any constructor arguments here either so we're not going to fit in anything here and now we come to the point where we need to handle this import statement so how are we going to do that well actually i've changed my mind a little bit for this video we're going to do it the dgen way okay we're going to just going to copy paste everything in here uh, that we need if you were using truffle for this you could be using something called the truffle flattener which is a node package truffle dash flattener that will do this for you and output it into one single file because that's what we need we need one single file with all of the solidity code from our imported libraries um but uh, we're not in truffle now we're just in remix so what we're going to do instead is we're going to go into our file explorer here and we're going to look up the contract that we imported here erc 1155.sol that is in here. Dependencies, GitHub, Open Zeppelin, Contracts, Contract Token, ERC 1155. And ERC 1155 is here. So then we will take this contract and we will paste that in. Apart from Pragma Solidity. So we'll take that, paste that. import statements as well so this needs to go now we're not importing them anymore that's true here as well we don't import statement we just need the contract part there we go paste that in there then in turn we can see that this contract uses these context erc165 ierc155 and this metadata so we're going to take ERC-165 and do the same thing here. 
that's all that is. Then we're gonna take that and paste that at the top. And we see that we also use IERC165. I'm gonna use that here. Interface, very short. And then what else did we use in 1155? We need to make sure we got everything. Context, we need context, but I think we should take that last. We also need IERC1155, which is here. We need this interface. Is that at the top here, I think. Uh, no, that needs to be below the 165 contract because even the interface it use, uses the interface uses also the IERC 1155, sorry, IERC 165. So that is also dependency here, which means it needs to be defined above it. What else? We had the IERC 1155, the IERC metadata URI, mm -mm -mm -mm. this one. And let's see, now you see why this is. It needs to be below this one. Here we go. And by the way, if you, if you screw up the order, then you will get an error. So you can figure that out pretty quickly. Finally, what else? The context. Context.solve. That I will put at the top. Okay, let's see if I got everything. Otherwise, I will get an error. We have no constructor arguments. Let's try this. I'm going to copy all of this. In case it doesn't save it for me. Submit source. I'm sure I missed something in this chaos. Yes. Let's see. Warning. Declaration error. Identifier not found or not unique. Using address. So we have another dependency that I missed somewhere. And that is this. Address.solve. That's a library. So. Copy all of this. Oops. Put that at the top. Now let's try again. So you see what I'm saying about the errors. You can sort of figure out by reading the error message. Verify and publish again. I'll copy this. Better safe than sorry. Checking again. We're missing IERC1155 receiver. Did we include this? Did not include this. So we need I here receiver dot sol. I put that. See what does that use? Is any put that at the top. Let's try again. Now I have another one of these one that says definition of base has to precede the definition of derived contract, which means that we have put IERC 65 below IERC 1155 receiver. So we need to find IERC 165 and move it up. Hey, look at that. Uh, now it is verified and you can see how long this is because there's so much code. And, uh, you know, I told you, I warned you it was the DGM way, but here we are, we managed it. And uh, I think it still was faster than starting a new Truffle project, getting everything into there, compiling, installing, all that stuff. So 
Uh, but it is some work to do. I'm sure I can do another video how to do it with truffle as well. Uh, so I can show you that too. Because it is uh, a lot smoother. You don't have to do so much uh, tinkering. But let's check out our contract. Here it is. Now it is verified. You can see the entire contract here. With all of our dependencies. We can read the contract. We can write the contract. All of that good stuff. Um, and that's it. That's how you verify a contract. Um, and this works on Ethereum. It works on Testnet Mainnet. It works on Binance Smart Chain, Testnet Mainnet. Uh, all, you know, blockchains that are EVM based and have the same block explorer as this one, Etherscan. Because they all look the same in terms of verifying contracts. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comment section below. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.